Welcome to the Tip Podcast, episode number three, the gaming talk show where we talk about game news, sometimes tech stuff, and generally penises. A lot of penis. A lot of penis. Like I two have... or three a cat. <laughs> just, where, where do you just like drone out for like 70% of the stream? Only two or three penises? <laughs> Well, like two or three hundred very specific penises, <laughs> and then like you know just throwing a bunch of horse background rhino penises. and dog, horse <laughs> rhino and dog, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Well, we've already <laughs> fucking start. divulged ourselves <laughs> at this level. <laughs> uh, I, I am the Game th- Pits. If you don't know me, I am Nate TGP Nate TGP Pits. Million other goddamn different names. Variety streamer on Twitch. To my that way <laughs> is Mr. S- is Mr. Gray Super Gray thirty eight ah. on Twitch. Mr. Gray Gray one on Twitter. Currently not dead as we thought he might have been. Still Canadian though. Pretty touching though. <laughs> to my lower corner there is Mr. Spike Sethen. Spike Sethen on Twitch. Spike Sethen TV. Literally everywhere else that you can exist. Basically, <laughs> everywhere Spike Sethen TV. So Except for Twitch. Uh, generally, as we start these things off, we talk about what we've been doing throughout the week. Um, we don't initially address chat throughout the podcast. We do a Q&A at the end of the cast um, where we'll take questions and answers from everybody um, that has a question or an answer. Better dead than Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> so if we'd like to start off with our undead guest of honor here. Oh. Oh, uh, I've you, just... You were, <laughs> <laughs> you were just, the dying uh, one, uh, Yeah, dying, pretty much. <laughs> I've been lying in bed for like a week and a half. Any video That's game mage during that time or what? Uh, Yeah, I ended up completing a Resident Evil 6 campaign because I was like, you know what? I own it. I'm just going to finish it. I'm going to push <laughs> myself through it. <laughs> Because I was really sick and I didn't want to commit to anything I actually like. So, <laughs> I don't want to play anything sick, good, so what? Resident Evil 6. <laughs> I'm when just going to make myself as miserable as possible. No, when I'm sick, I play games that like I don't have to commit to and are just you know mediocre. And it's just like, I don't know. So, so the entire <laughs> Call of Duty franchise in one evening... <laughs> yeah, I mean that's something I would do if I bought Call of Duty games still. <laughs> oh snap! Oh uh, snap! <laughs> <clears throat> all right, sorry about that. You all right there? I totally could have muted the mic, but uh, <laughs> professionalism. <laughs> Welcome. All right, Spike, sir. Sounds like those people. <laughs> professionalism. Who are those guys? <laughs> Uh, this week, um, I was talking to Felix yesterday. He got his CPU and his new motherboard. Uh, he's rocking a Zion 1231 V3 on a new LGA 1150 board, and he is loving it. Performance numbers, like, he was previously casting at, like, 60 to 70% on really cheap kind of indie titles, and now he's hardly pushing 13. So... I'm really happy that worked out. For those of you who don't know, I did a fundraiser for SC2 Felix. We raised $343.60 after the PayPal taxes that were taken out. Yeah, so that, that went very well. That <laughs> was flawless. Absolutely flawless. I'm really happy about that. As for games that I have been playing, <clears throat> I did a little bit of the Shadow of Mordor uh, DLC, uh, The Bright Lord. <clears throat> It's, eh, I mean, it's all right. It's they didn't really, ch- they didn't really change a lot. In fact, they changed very little. Just like dialogue that goes by, because um, a lot of the, a lot of the commentary from the rest of the orcs is just exactly what it was before. Even though the guy didn't exist when uh, Killabrimbor was alive, so you know, who cares about immersion or anything like that? But it's okay. <laughs> you know, they came out with DLC. Yeah, they have a couple. They have the Bright Lord, and then they have like this this hunt thing where you talk with the dwarf. They're okay. They're nothing special though, <laughs> which is a shame because the game is actually pretty well done. 
especially considering it's a, a franchise, a licensed franchise. You'd never see that. Right. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. It was, I mean, there was some parts that kind of frustrated me. Like, you know, you murder, you like murder an orc, and then three seconds later, he's like the break there again, <laughs> and you have to fight him. Yeah, but that's basically all I've done was just some Shadow of Mordor is really the only thing I touched on. I did some research on a bunch of games, but that's not really playing anything. So, right. That and uh, finding out about Felix being all green and go. It's cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm super happy about that. We did a good job. You. Meows. <laughs> Keep uh, getting tweets from these random fucking people that are just putting my name with four other names. I know. Me and Gray just got one, too. I'm fucking <laughs> so tired of that shit. <laughs> I mean, thanks for the the crowding of me, the people. <laughs> for the useless. <clears throat> so uh, uh, you bought as far as what I've been up to, uh, fucking <laughs> graphics, graphics, and more graphics. Graphic, graphics. <laughs> Drawing a lot. We can see the new tip layout here and all the fancy new graphics. Adding animated screens to things and doing other things for other people. Some of them which are, well, actually two of them which are here. So be <clears> happy <throat> when you get your products, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, uh, did, you do, did you do my animated thingy? Yeah, it's being worked on. Because oh. you're like, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too excited for it because there's like 80 people that said they would do something. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I have a degree. <laughs> Some of them do. I have Some of them credentials. Do. <laughs> uh, as far as casting went, we did, we finished up Darksiders 1, moved on to Darksiders 2. That pretty much killed my cast, so I moved on to Bastion. Uh, oh, they it killed your cat? How so? There was just no interest in Darksiders 2. <laughs> no one cared for Darksiders 2? Shadow! Are you fucking serious with this right now, Clarence? No. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's going on mute. Shadow! Shadow, you slut! Uh, yeah, so moved on to Bastion. Uh, I've been actually playing video games in my off time as well. Shit ton of Nintendo stuff just because I can't cast it, but I've been wanting to play Wind Waker HD. Uh, yeah. Should have awesome. fucking. Uh, it's Wind Waker HD. All we did was add Bloom. Now they. <laughs> they redid Bloom the textures. And shadows. And... <clears throat> the textures aren't that different. I mean, it's a cartoony art style. How much are you going to upscale that? They're a lot sharper, though. Mm, They're a lot sharper, and the color palettes are way better. I guess. I look at it, and all I see is shadows and Bloom. <laughs> Seeing you with shadows in bloom. <laughs> Fucking ten <10-0. laughs> All right, so should we move on to our first topic of the day, or does anybody else want to talk about any other things prior to that? Horse, rhino, dog, penis. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. All right, we're ready. <laughs> so first thing on the agenda, darkest dungeon had a bit of a flub on the Windows Store where it is not officially sold. <laughs> Darkest Dungeon, if people don't know, was being sold on the Windows Game Store by a guy who just bought a bunch of copies of Darkest Dungeon and sold it for like two bucks or something like that. And just pass it off. Um, so there's... <clears throat> from what I understand... Um, they're not quite taking the Ubisoft route in honoring the people who bought the pirated copies. <laughs> At least that's not officially been said yet, as far as I know. Well, I don't know if they're doing that, but I don't think they should. Because anyone that... They, it's not something that's even being distributed on that store in the first place. Right. Like, how it got there, I don't know. Yeah, I mean... It was really weird, too, because, like, a lot of people bought it, even though it was, like, Darkest Dungeon, and it's, like, 2.4 megabytes. <laughs> and, I mean, it should have, like, just immediately appeared as a scam to anyone who was actually interested in the game, right? I mean, 2.4 well, I mean, megabytes is, if isn't anyone... even a song anymore. <laughs> people will jump on anything cheaper that they can jump onto, though. But, I mean, I get that, but, like, when did... No one from Darkest Dungeon had ever said anything about selling the game on the Windows Store. Right. Not a single. 
Never. Like, it's <laughs> always been Steam. <coughs> yeah. And as far as I'm aware, when you're on the Windows Store, you can see who's essentially published the game. And it yeah. was just some random account from Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Is. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't well, think so they I... need to do anything about this. Yeah. I think because Ubisoft was that was a different situation where was it was, you know, different. it was. It was a gray market that isn't legal, but also isn't illegal. Right. And that was that is different. This is like this wasn't even supposed to be sold here in the first place. And it's a legal shop that was allowing distribution of something that. Where they got the rights to distri- distribute it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the weirdest thing is like how that didn't immediately get flagged for Microsoft to like. You know what I mean? Like Microsoft had like no oversight in that. Like, well, that's the whole thing about yeah. it, right? Is that nobody was checking. Like even yeah, Microsoft so didn't even have somebody... a system in place to stop that shit from happening. Yeah, I mean, it's not even like like you know a more traditional scam where it's like they have a completely made up game. And then so it's kind of hard to tell until somebody buys it and it doesn't work, right? But, like, Darkest Dungeon is a game that people know exists, right? So, I mean, it's publicly known, uh, like, who makes the game and stuff. So if that person isn't publishing it, then that should be a red flag immediately for, you know, the people who work for the distribution for the Microsoft Service Network. Like, I don't know how they didn't immediately figure that out. Yeah, I don't. That's Sorry. <laughs> La- lack of oversight, just purely and completely, just lack of oversight. They're not checking yeah. shit, apparently. Yeah, which means um, public service announcement to everyone here: don't buy anything on the fucking Windows Store. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that, that immediately. We don't know if it's supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> that immediately, right there, will make me not shop on the Windows Store, just because. I mean. That's pretty scary, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's. I mean, it'd be pretty easy to just put a virus in that file too, right? If you're not. <laughs> I uh, I guess if yeah. users just, are able to put up that information, they're able to put up the files too, right? Exactly. Because people were able to download something. Like. <laughs> sketchy <laughs> shit, man. <clears throat> pretty sketchy. <clears throat> Uh, so moving on to second topic of somebody. Thank you, Ariel, for that before I had to respond myself. <laughs> uh, who wants to bring up second topic there? I can do it. Uh, GTA 5 got a delay again uh, for the PC. Um, originally, it was supposed to come out a lot sooner. Then it <laughs> was delayed till March, and now it's delayed again until April and the... People that make GTA Rockstar are saying that uh, in, in, in good faith of this delay to the people that have been really looking forward to it, they are offering an extra two or promising an extra two hundred thousand dollars in game to those who pre-order. Personally, this <laughs> because we already know that Rockstar isn't delaying this because they want to make a better port because they have a history of not making good ports ever. Um. I feel like this is almost like we got to make sure more people pre-order this game type of ploy here. It feels Because they're promising that way. more in terms of a delay. It almost seems like, hey, <clears throat> it's going to take longer, but you get more. Yeah, hey. I mean, <laughs> how I look at it, it's nice that they're giving something to the pre-orders that exist already. But by being very public about it, it does feel like they're reaching for new pre-orders as well. Yeah, like they yeah, could have no, they could have just sent out a blank a blanket message to everybody who had a pre-order and said, "This is what we're going to do about it." It would certainly help their stock prices <laughs> to have a bunch of games sold before it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> There's really not a lot to really talk about that. It's the game's being delayed. Uh, yeah, Rockstar's yeah. offering more benefits on pre-orders because of the delay. Uh, all I really care about is if the game comes out. Like, if it comes out on PC, cool. Because we've seen titles from uh, Rockstar that were supposed to get put on PC. And then, like, they're like, oh, we're delaying it. 
oh, we're delaying it a little more, and then eventually it just falls off the face of the earth. Right. Like Red Dead Redemption. App. So, it, I mean, it's on Steam. It's got a price point on Steam. It's got pre-orders. They can't really back out now, but you know what I mean? Yeah. This, is, this, stuff, this, this stuff that Rockstar has pulled before. <clears throat> yeah, I mean... <laughs> I don't know. I'm skeptical this that it will even be a good port just because of <laughs> that'd be a good port. It's Rockstar. They've never exactly made a good port ever ever ever. Yeah. I wanted to play Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> so bad. Like I liked it on Xbox, but it would have performed so much better on PC. A lot of people want that game on PC. <laughs> Yeah. I, I believe there's a petition out there if you want to look for it. <laughs> because internet petitions work all the time. Actually, in a general case, they do, yeah. Well, I mean, this is actually a uh, an example. The next topic is actually an example of one working quite well. Mm-hmm. True, but that's not like... It's kind of a different thing because it's a much more serious matter, right? Like, it's not just... I don't know. Nope. Do you want to bring it up, Gray? Or... Uh, <laughs> no. I don't know. You're the one who read that specific article. I only know like the BBC story, so I actually believe I'm the one that told told Nate about it. Uh, oh, okay. I knew it before you told me of it. Oh. Huh. All right. So the FCC ruling for net neutrality passed. Everything worked out the way we wanted to, and now internet service providers are shitting themselves about it. AT and is already suing. AT and T <laughs> is suing. Verizon put a statement out there that was like, "Fuck this! You're destroying everything that we've <clears throat> standardized our business practices on." Good, because your business is shit. Exactly. <laughs> so somebody's losing reiterate. money out of their super pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, to reiterate exactly what net neutrality is, I, mean, I know it's been hammered out a lot of times, but there are still people that aren't really aware what it is. So right. net neutrality was the the idea behind the Internet to make sure that it remained uh, it remained uncontrolled. It was something that should not be um, turned into a what's the word I'm looking for, a um, capitalist environment where. People charge you for X websites and like stuff like the like cable television. This is what net yeah. neutrality was there for to prevent something like that. Exactly. And a certain event took place that uh, pointed out that the FCC didn't have the internet classified as a certain thing, and then ISPs were like, "Make money, make money." And make money, just recently, bitches. just recently, the FCC actually ruled to reinstate the concept of net, net neutrality and classify the internet as a public utility, which now prevents ISPs from doing things like what Comcast did to Netflix. And AT&T was so upset within like five hours, they're like, we're suing. Yeah. What was, yeah. uh... <laughs> I'd like to reiterate what Verizon said specifically because it's so dumb and ridiculous. <laughs> Like, okay, th the best thing was is that Verizon made made a statement on this through, uh, what's the code even called? It it's the code that's used for, uh, uh, fuck, English is escaping me at the moment. Braille? It's not Braille, it's, um, What's Morse. Like Morse. Morse. Long and short, really? That's what they... Verizon, you're not that smart. <laughs> so then in Morse code, they sent out the blanket statement. Uh, the FCC today chose to change the way the commercial internet has operated since its creation. Changing a platform <laughs> that has been so successful should be done, if at all, only after careful policy analysis, full transparency, and by the legislator, which it was presented upon anyways, which is constitutionally, constitutionally charged with determining policy. As a result, it is likely that history will judge today's actions as misguided. That's a bunch of babies crying that they don't get to capitalize the market anymore and just do whatever the fuck they want to. It's incredibly how ironic that statement is because he says changing a platform that has been so successful should be done at all 
done, if at all, only after careful policy analysis. All the like, they're the ones who wanted to change it, right? Like, all the yeah. F- all the FCC yeah. did was say you can't change it. <laughs> they're the ones who wanted to change it. Not only that, but I mean, they're like the legislator which is constitutionally charged that's the fcc <laughs> that's their entire job <laughs> is yeah so, i mean i mean he basically just said like like he said it as a, they shouldn't have done this but essentially his statement confirms that that's exactly what they should have done <laughs> yeah essentially <It's>, yeah <laughs> so um someone i know i know we're not supposed to address a chat but ariel asked that um what did Comcast do to Netflix? And that's something I feel like I should explain because well, I, yeah. kind I mean, of just assume people know let's, it. Let's just put that out there uh, first and foremost. If there's a very good point that's involved into the discussion, you can discuss chat as freely as you need to. All right. It's not like you guys don't exist. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just interjecting that. Yeah. Um, what Comcast? All right. So uh, at a point in time, Netflix was receive, uh, receiving a lot of traffic. All right. They were getting hundreds of thousands of people using their service and it was expanding rapidly. Comcast uh, started to complain saying that, hey, your service is using a lot of bandwidth. Um, What are you gonna do about it? And Comcast was like, we're not gonna do anything because that's for you to do. And what Comcast did was retaliated to Netflix's response of, we're not gonna do anything by throttling users on their their, uh, service they're throttling their connection to Netflix, which in turn made Netflix lose money because people started canceling their subscriptions to Netflix because it was running slow. Yeah. So in the end, what Netflix ended up doing to preserve themselves was paying Comcast to upgrade Comcast's infrastructure to support the bandwidth being used, it was which is illegal. It was essentially a <laughs> mafia protection racket. It was like, oh, hey, that's a nice streaming service you got there. Be a shame if somebody came in and wrecked it. (laughs) If you pay me a small amount of money, I'll protect it. Make sure that it runs nice and smoothly. That's what it was. It was a protection racket. (laughs) Yeah, that's actually a very good comparison. I didn't think of it that way, yeah. (laughs) And now they can't do that. And no ISP based on this change can do that. Not only can they not do, they cannot charge uh other companies like that they can't charge consumers based on what internet they're using either they charge you how much they're going to give you and that's the end of it data caps things like what services you're using that is that's all you you don't pay for that extra or anything like that due to this change which is good because it was getting to the point where they were going to start doing things like the fast lane idea which was We'll give you an amount of internet, but you can pay us more for to make sure it runs better type of thing. Yeah. Basically, the poor people get this, the rich people get this, which is no. Yeah, it's nope. a step in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, I can still yes. like an incredible amount of problems with ISPs. Yeah, I mean, oh, I yeah. can I can tell you that when it starts getting around a certain time at night for me, my shit gets throttled super hard. And then, you know, where I generally have, because <clears throat> everything I have set up is in is in Michelle's office, and then I have the Xbox in the bedroom all the way at the other, other end of the house. During the day, I can stream shit to the Xbox with no problem. As soon as, like, 6 o'clock hits, everything just <laughs> buffers and dies. Yeah, I've had issues like that around, like, 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. It's only for, like, about an hour, but, I mean, for, like, 1 to 2 a.m., my internet's a lot slower than it normally is. Which doesn't make any sense because it's the ass end of night. It's yeah. not even prime time. So it, it's like they're just saving money by just making it so people can't use the internet too much. Yeah, like basically. That should be, you know, super grossly illegal. Mm-hmm. And they Throttling? Should... it. I think we're going to get to that point soon. With the, so. yeah. the, the internet being turned into a utility like this, I think it's going to eventually come up that ISPs are just not allowed to do this type of stuff if their services provide it. Right? Yeah, if that's... their network can support that, they don't have the right to do it. Type of thing. Right. Yeah, that that's what I mean is like that it's a step in the right direction because, yeah. yeah, like throttling will probably be the next really big issue because it's just insane that that's a thing. I throttling mean, and hopefully prices. 
prices Price are pretty change. absurd. <laughs> and like, like just general contracts and stuff, right? Like they're usually pretty unethical. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. Not so much here. We're kind of free to do whatever the fuck we want in Arizona. <laughs> I mean, we don't really get locked into hard contracts. Yeah, I've like only ever can't... I've only ever had that type of issue with uh, things like cable and phone. I don't think internet really. Yeah, when you when you start like bundling with. things like that or or rolling into cable yeah. service, then they want yeah. you to have that because they're providing you this and this for so long. But even still, my internet was like. 50 bucks for six months and then it shot up to 80 for a 45 plan <laughs> that's what they always do Man. you can have this for half a year and then after that we're going to charge you whatever we want Pretty plus much. fees <laughs> are you like uh, price hikes, kids <laughs> all right great this next one is yours <clears throat> all right all right all right, so um, there was recently an article on GameIndustry.biz, and uh, essentially it was just talking about how um, a couple of really successful developers of free-to-play games have started, uh, like, just they're critical of the free-to-play industry as a whole, too. And that's essentially just because of how exploitative certain, uh, like, people, like, how it's being used is very exploitative. Um, like, essentially, when you look at games like Candy Crush and whatever, it, instead of being a really good way, uh, like, a really consumer-friendly way to publish a game, they're using it the same way, like, slot machines, essentially, like, the... Uh, you know, the same way people get addicted to gambling, which is like, you know, well, you almost beat this level, and you should pay us another dollar, and then you'll probably be able to beat it. It's like, and it, I mean, a... that, that, that's what a slot machine is, right? I mean, and they're they're basically tapping into that gambling part of the brain. But I mean, so, I don't know. Like, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because there is a good way to do free-to-play. Like, uh, there's there's some really good examples out there. I mean, one of the biggest games out is League of Legends, and it does free-to-play in a really good way. I don't particularly like playing MOBAs, but, I mean, their, I their agree, business yeah. model is excellent, right? I mean, the, I the wouldn't game, say excellent, but it works. It works. It's It's friendly enough. You know what I mean? Like, in the sense that you get to play the whole game, but if you want like an extra costume or whatever, then you pay a little bit more money. It See, doesn't... that's that's specifically the free to play. I agree with. I don't agree with a lot of the free to play that's out there um, and their microtransactions. When it becomes mm -hmm. a point of, I mean, there's there's a thing to be specified between pay to win and such. You should be able to finish the whole game without spending any extra money that you haven't already spent on the game. But you should also have the option to spend the money on the game that doesn't necessarily influence gameplay, like skins and costumes or whatever else. That's fine. Yeah. I don't even necessarily mind when it affects gameplay, like Team Fortress, right? Because it, it doesn't... It, it affects your ability to play the game, but it doesn't give you an advantage. Like... I don't know. <laughs> I think there's some definitely overpowered weapons in the marketplace for uh, TF2. Uh, yeah, I mean, that might be the case. Like, I'm not super hardcore into it. I just play it once in a while. But I've never had a problem with, like, the weapons I find dropped or whatever. Like, I never well, yeah, dro that was... Drops, that's, yeah. That's a bit different. Yeah. But, that, but that's what I mean, is, like, I mean, for the most part, they try and keep it balanced as possible. It's just, I suppose, yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, f from what I see of this, I can I can see both spectrums. And what I want to discuss is the stigma behind um, consumers when they see the term free to play. Because yeah. what happens nowadays is when anyone anyone sees the 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 characters F two P in a row, the first thing they actually equate that to is pay to win 
and yeah. that is that yeah. couldn't be further from the truth. Th there are pay to win games, and there are a lot of them, but those pay to win games don't get any publicity anymore. Well, you know, like I'm guilty of just ignoring free to play games these days because it was just such a caustic environment for so long, right? Like, like I personally like. Like, I never even tried, you know, Warframe or anything. I just skipped right over it because it was like, yeah, just free to play. Probably garbage. Probably have to spend $10 to avoid cooldowns. It's like, I mean, but then it turns out I was apparently wrong because it's a really good game. Yeah, War but I mean, Warframe is, is definitely fun. And there there is a pay-to-win <laughs> aspect to where you can get advantage by paying money. But if you just grind hard enough, you get that anyways. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. that's locked down by money. Right. I mean, MMOs are a really good uh, example of games that benefit from free-to-play, especially, like, smaller MMOs. Because, I mean, like, I feel like if, you know, games like The Elder Scrolls Online was free-to-play from the get-go, they probably would have been able to maintain a relatively decent consumer base. Oh, but I mean, yeah. yeah, the problem was that they were like, all right, we're going to charge full retail and we're going to ask for subscriptions. And it was like... And microtransactions. <laughs> and microtransactions. <laughs> like, they really... Which there up. wasn't a lot of them, but you could buy a horse in the game. And that's, you know, you're paying money to get a benefit on top of the fact that you paid money to get the game on top of the fact <laughs> that you pay money to continue having the game. ESO was one of the examples I was going to bring up. Uh, because during the... Uh, the beta, I had a lot of time during the beta, um, both in the closed beta and in the open beta when they did that, uh, when I started casting it. Um, every time I played the beta, I would talk to people in the community. I was like, what do you think about this game being free to play? What do you think about maybe removing the subscription model that they were talking about? And everyone, absolutely everyone was like, no, this game has to be a subscription. If it's free to play, everyone's going to be an asshole and you're going to get gold farmers everywhere. And... You know what happened on release? Gold farmers everywhere. So it clearly if that's you have a subscription. It does it doesn't matter if you have a subscription. You're gonna have gold farmers, right? Yeah, it's, it's just one the way stigma the other, yeah. behind free to play though, that a lot of people look at it as just like the death <laughs> of a game. Um, oh, Star Wars The Old Republic is a prime example of the game going free to play and then getting a bigger community from it. Yeah, that game, that game, like, was almost, you know, dead within a couple months. And then, like, they're like, well, we just spent, you know, a bajillion dollars making this game, so we got to figure something out. And then it went free to play, and then people came back. People just didn't want to pay a subscription. And it was like, it's not, I mean, it, it's a fairly uh, by-the-numbers MMO, but... Yeah, it's, it's true. Also, yeah, but ultimately, like, when people were able to play for free, they came back. And I mean, that, that, uh... Like, like pound for pound is a single player experience. And even like the multiplayer aspects of, uh, Swooter, because it's acronyms, <laughs> it's actually a really good game. It's made by Bioware, who have a resound group of fucking voice actors behind them. So, like, every single character in that game is voice acted, which in and of itself is extremely <laughs> rare for an MMO. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good game, and there was, like, no one playing it until it went free to play. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I enjoyed all this, like, just playing The Old Republic as a single player game. <laughs> That's uh, pretty much generally how I play MMOs anyways. I stay the yeah. fuck away from everybody. <laughs> Too many toxic people. <clears throat> but I mean, there's definitely... You have the parts of the community that were subscription-based who start complaining when things go free-to-play. You've seen that with everything, including Star Wars Old Republic. Mm. Old Republic. Jesus. <laughs> um, but still, yeah, they do gain more numbers in that Minus the people who they maybe lose because they're pissed about it going free to play. Because then those people are like, ugh, take the game because now everybody can play it. Yeah. So fucking what? <laughs> they, they have a high number to contend with, and that's WoW's numbers. That's what everybody is trying to comp 
contend with in the MMA There's market. No, you, you shouldn't. You can't. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. not, it's not worth it, right? Like, if you have I, a community, you did a good job. <laughs> like, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up ESO really quick. MMO. All right. Sorry, what'd you say? I, I was just saying, if your MMO is profitable, then you don't need to be wow. Like, you just need to be making money. I, yeah, I can <laughs> see that. I guess. I I mean. What? The thing, the problem with a lot of MMOs, though, is that they are money whores. Like oh, they're they're either they're either making a lot of money or you are losing a lot of money by it existing. There's there's never really like the type of person that sits there and is like, oh, we're we're sustaining. Oh, you, still, you still want growth, <clears throat> but I, yeah. you, like just don't bother trying to be World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> don't don't even bother. Path of Exile has a pretty good system in place, I think, as far as like what you can spend money on as far as microtransactions are concerned. And that's storage space, essentially. Th that that game is fantastic from, from start to end, and the microtransactions don't really affect the gameplay at all unless you're just like an item whoring person. <laughs> you're an item farmer and you need more storage space, you know? Yeah, I've never had the problem with... Uh, I've actually always liked the idea that you can have like one or two characters and they work fully, but it's like pay an extra two dollars for another character slot. But I mean, well, Path of Exile doesn't even do that, right? You can have as many characters. No, as you, you can want. have as many characters. Well, yeah. there's a limit on the amount of characters of course, you can right. have, but you can't like buy more character slots. Oh, so it's just like loot. It's inventory. your inventory storage. It's, uh, it's a stash. All your but here's the thing. Here's the thing about that. Your stash is already huge in and of yeah. itself. You have like three pages worth of information you can have right from the start. And like the the only time you'll run into a point where you're going to fill up all three of those pages is if you put in like maybe 500 hours into the game and you are playing ev like a bunch of different characters, a bunch of different leagues, that kind of stuff. And at that point, more often than not, people are going to be like, all right, I got like, you know, three, four or 500 hours into this game. It's worth 20 bucks. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So, I mean, that's the thing is like, I think that's, you know, why uh, so many people purchase things in like League of Legends and Dota is because they're already hooked, right? They, they've already spent an <clears throat> absurd amount of time in it, and then they just end up buying everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I bought the, uh, the, Bastion narrator for Dota 2 when I was playing that game. <laughs> it's, it's pretty badass. <laughs> to address that really quickly, Bloke, I put way more hours into Path of Exile than you have, and I've never filled up my inventory. You just need to get better at management. Shit's fired. <laughs> the microtransactions are insane, but Poe is amazing. What do you mean by insane? I shouldn't ask that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I just read it and I'm like, that they're insane as good or insane as in like, why would you spend $150? And it's like, some people just want to throw money at developers. Look at Game Guru. <laughs> I I'm serious. Yeah. Game Guru has put so much money into alphas and betas. It's ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> All right. Moving on from that long discussion. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sony's beating up Microsoft even, in digital sales. I didn't even look at this. Did you not? No. And it's the reason why of... I did it is because I don't give a shit about next gen. So <laughs> I, I just looked at it and I'm like, okay, I guess we're talking about it. It's kind of interesting in the numbers game. Yeah. Um, I guess. The, the basic trend shows that the large majority of game purchases as far as consoles are concerned are being, are being done digitally. I'm sure PC... PC, those numbers are even higher. They've got to be with Steam. They're and way Georgia. higher. Yeah. Oh, um, physical copies are just almost non-existent on PC yeah. now. Yeah, pretty much. Go, go to your nearest brick and mortar, and you'll see, like, five PC boxes, and that's it. It's like... Yeah. I mean, most game stores <clears throat> don't even deal in PC games. No? Yeah. Yeah. Just, like, Best Buy. <laughs> GameStop, GameStop sells computer hardware, but you have to buy a piece of paper, and then they'll ship it to you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i just found that hilarious this but yeah dying funny. light was all digital for the first month of its existence and that sold a lot <clears throat> yeah that was that's actually kind of like a really huge step right i mean 
uh, like they didn't even release their physical copy at the same time. They didn't bother, and it was still like one of the number one selling games for a while. Like, yeah, it was. It sold pretty good. Yeah, that's that's huge. Like, apparently, over fifty. Like the article says, is that over fifty percent of game sales were digital. And I mean, over like that sixty percent. Even yeah, that's like the the first time that's happened. And I mean, for so consoles. It's, like for I consoles, remember, yeah. yeah, for consoles. Sorry, um, I remember. Like it, it wasn't like five years ago where people were like, I don't want to buy digital. That's bullshit. I want a physical copy so that I can, you know, trade with my friends and blah 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 blah. And it was yeah. like, uh, so to see that it's like a huge uh, paradigm shift when it comes to how people think of digital sales now. It it goes hand in hand with the more friendly you make the environment for consumers, the more likely they're going to adopt that environment. And with companies like GameStop and and stuff like that, where there where people are becoming more and more aware of how it just does not help developers yeah. on the used um, sales spectrum, it, they become more and more aware of like, well, if we buy this game digitally, it's cheaper and it will always work instead of the disc will last me two three years and then i have to buy a new one or i also i also think it has to do with how consumer friendly the process is compared to brick and mortars like there was actually just a really funny comic strip on penny arcade where they're like oh my god look at this store there's everything we could ever want (laughs) and then they're like like why did we stop coming here and he's like did you pre-order it this is for pre-orders and it was just like it's so unfriendly going to those stores now. That's essentially the environment. You, yeah. Like that's the thing is is you go there to buy something and then they try and show you like six other things, and it's like it's it's just a really obnoxious environment to be a consumer. So I mean, why not just skip all that, sit down at your TV, and then purchase exactly what you want without being you know somebody trying to shove other shit down your throat. Yeah. Like, um, Gabe Newell uh, said a long time ago when people were complaining about the Pirate Bay and, you know, pirating games, he said, the only way to stop pirates is to offer a better service than they do. That's what I said last week. I was mm-hmm. trying to get someone to find out where the quote was because I didn't is remember it, who oh, yeah, said it. Gabe Newell. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense now. Yep. He is a <laughs> forward thinking man. There's a lot of people that call him a genius. Many of them do it because of Half-Life. I do it because he actually is one. <laughs> I, I, I like Half-Life, but I prefer him more as a businessman. Like, he's yeah, a Gabe very, is, he's a smart dude. Very smart. Yeah, he's even, ethical, if, right? even if Valve is just super fucking covert and we never know what they're doing, they oh, then. still are, you know, a, a a good company to be controlling this market at least <laughs> then then well, i mean there's, you... there's something to be said for that as a whole because valve as a company just runs so much differently than most others that's because oh, yeah. i mean that's privately owned though right it's, it's privately like, owned i mean that's and it's to the point tip. that everybody is on the fucking same level there if you want to go yeah. pitch an idea to gabe newell you just go talk to gabe newell oh absolutely and if you've ever They're... looked at their actual employee handbook that they finally put out you just move around as you need to with whatever person you're working with you just take your desk and move it over here, and you're working with that person now. You know, he it, and it he comes, takes everybody to Hawaii every year. <laughs> it comes to like a lot of his philosophies too, right? Like, um, somebody was having trouble getting through to Steam customer support, which is not unheard of. <laughs> like, let's face it, it's really bad. But so they decided to just tweet Gabe Newell, and then he actually like help them solve their problem and he said don't feel like because the person's like i'm really sorry i don't want to bug you he's like don't feel bad about that because at valve everyone is customer support i mean so when when like the head of digital sales is doing something like that like when the company that leads digital sales is doing that and best buy is trying to like make you pre-order and trying to force like loyalty cards down your throat I mean, what are you going to choose, right? <laughs> like, it comes down to which one's more consumer friendly. 
If GameStop was more consumer friendly, I would go to GameStop, but it's a piece of shit run by yeah. assholes. So it's not all it's not only not consumer friendly, it's not even developer friendly. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> no, it's just... they constantly try and screw developers out of their money, right? Yep. Yeah, it's it's actually it's actually in the um, requirements as a person that works a cashier to every time there is a purchase to push the idea of selling either one of their in-house made products like a GameStop product mm -hmm. or a used copy. Oh, yeah, because yeah. they get 100 percent of the profits for that stuff. And that's the reason like yeah, I've, I've had that literally every time I've gone in there to go pick up a new copy of something and they're like, well, we have it pre owned for five dollars less. Like five dollars is not going to get me to buy into your fucking company. Give me the game I'm asking for, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eat I mean, all of the dicks. <laughs> eat all of the dicks. I'm still here. I, uh, Bye, Gray. Bye. What? What are you saying? We loved hey. you. <laughs> hey. Are <laughs> uh, you turning the light on? Holy fucking. Shit. Yeah. It's still gets human. Because I'm being light. There. Fuck light. Um, Fuck yeah, light. I mean... <laughs> I forgot I don't take my mic with me anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Um, so, yeah, that's the reason I remember a while back they were trying to block the sale of used games. It, 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 like, it wasn't because, like, the small guy sitting there selling, like, Super NES games... You know, like keeping, you know, the classic market alive or whatever, which doesn't bother them. It was because of GameStop and their three billion dollar used game industry. Yeah, because... it was um, it you remember when uh, Xbox One and that's tried to push the always online thing. Mm hmm. One of the reasons they were trying to do that was shutting down that type of market, because not only do developers lose money publishers lose money yeah. so it's it's literally every single aspect of the industry loses money because of gamestop's used sale system yeah i'm not <laughs> well i mean not and, and we can't just blame gamestop because they set the no. trend for others to buy into it including yeah. best buy and I mean, walmart yeah, yeah. And any company that any big company that deals in used games is the reason they were trying to like that that's one of the reasons they were trying to do the always online drm thing right um I mean, and you can't blame them. Like, even, like, I don't, uh, I don't really weep when mega rich people don't make as much money. But games are a huge investment, especially AAA titles. Like, I mean, if they're not going to invest if they're, you know, not going to make their money. And that's, that hurts the industry. That hurts creativity. I mean... <clears throat> Well, I mean, we're talking about an industry at this point that can contend pound for pound, if not is already exceeding Hollywood. Like, I don't oh, know yeah. what the current numbers are, oh, but I think they're beyond that. They're they're beyond that. Yeah, we put out we I mean, put the, out the only industry they're never going they to touch. They put out movies. Yeah, it's yeah. There's more money in the gaming industry as of I right mean, now. Yeah, the, the industry they're never going to be able to touch is the same industry that nobody can touch, and that's porn because it'll always sell more. <laughs> porn sells. Thought it was free. <laughs> you would think the industry would be hurting because of that, right? But nope, Apparently, they're still the top oh, those... fucking selling industry. Apparently, the major parts of the industry are hurting, though. Apparently, it's uh, it's really hard to be mega rich as a porn star anymore. Nah. They're just not it's doing like, kinky just... enough shit. Hashtag just, eat all of the dicks. Need... <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Uh, we got kind of off track on that one, though. Um... Yeah, we should we should get back into the, the gaming thing. Because now we're talking about porn, which is fine with me. Let's just do that after the show. Yeah. yeah. Um, like so the essential point of that uh, that article was that PlayStation has vastly overtaken Xbox as far as digital console sales are concerned. Yeah. Um, they're now leading the console market in digital sales by 63% over uh, Xbox's total digital sales. <laughs> Sorry, but Ariel said it, and I'm like, I feel good now. <laughs> Apparently, the order was the number one selling game in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that game's bad. I know uh, that's why it's surprising to me. <laughs> also, I'm it's sorry if I peaked at any point during that. Yeah, it's awesome. Fucking followed me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> All right, so we doing the next one now? Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I'll cover this one because right. this, is, this is this is shit I'm aware of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> I don't read anything but what I put. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, you meanie. I just didn't read that one. I didn't care about Xbox, PlayStation, fucking woo. Yeah, I care. Um. <laughs> Uh, Gray, speak again for me. Uh, I cared about digital sales. No, no. <clears throat> no, I cared about digital sales. Oh, well, you were talking quietly. I thought your microphone died. Yeah, we thought you were oh. up. That's why I was telling you to talk. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. 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 Continue. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> <We're talking laughs> um, that was the old article, by the way, chat. All right, so, Microsoft is making some pretty big claims with their new DirectX 12, which is supposed to be shipped directly with er, Windows 10, all right? So before we get into what this is supposed to do, let me briefly explain what SLI and Crossfire are. Uh, SLI and Crossfire are currently the technologies (coughs) that are um, exclusive to the individuals that make them, such as NVIDIA and AMD. Essentially, it's when you put more than one card in a system in a configuration against each other. Stuff like Crossfire is for AMD and SLI is for NVIDIA. Up until now, well, even still now, but the claims, we're going to cover those in a moment. Up until now... Uh, SLI and Crossfire have never been a one-to-one ratio. It's never been like 100% performance when you have two cards. It's always been like 90% or 80%, or in some extreme cases, you actually lose performance by putting more cards in the system. Correct. Microsoft is saying that DirectX 12 will be able to take the entire graphics sub-environment and utilize it as one card. All of the output would be used as one single output including including when you put multiple architectures in that environment, such as an AMD and an NVIDIA card at the same time. It will take both of those and use both of their power in a single environment to pump it through one output instead of trying to do the environment of what it is now. That also includes VRAM. So normally with SLI and Crossfire, you only get you know, whatever the one card's VRAM is. Hmm. Now it can actually double that or throw, it throws everything, is basically what Microsoft is saying, which is huge. <laughs> and while I, yeah. was, while I was looking for a decent video on that today, I did run across an actual uh, live benchmark test that they did with DirectX 12. Um, I can't remember what the actual benchmark utility was called, but they showed everything running on Delex. DirectX 11, and you can see that there was a major split in uh, performance and priority between uh, multiple usages. And then when they went back and did it on DirectX 12, there was pretty much an equal ratio of everything running together. So there, there seems to be some validity to it. I haven't seen it in a true GPU-only environment working yet, though. Yeah, I mean it. It they are remember remember what I said at the beginning of this. That Microsoft is claiming mm-hmm. it to happen, but I, if they execute something like this, the market could change hugely. Things like SLI and Crossfire become much more applicable to consumers and enthusiasts, and developers can even utilize this information. Things like um, 3D rendering softwares can now use both Fire Pro and Quadro cards in the same system, so they don't have to go back and forth between systems over networks to get the proper performance needed. It, it, it could help everything. Television, movies, gaming, so many things this idea could help. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I was up until this news, I was still pretty much always against dual cards simply because there wasn't 100% support on it. The only time I would have ever considered dual cards is when running in a rendering environment where I was doing either a a large polygonal still shot or a long rendered animation. But even still, the performance I got out of a single card doing that for any production that I've ever worked on was still better than what I could have gotten out of dual GPUs. Because it's 100% instead of, yeah. With this, it actually, if it works, it'll make it 100% viable. To where I will go make a fucking render machine that has two ridiculous GPUs in it just to throw shit on there and render. Say bye. See you in an hour. <laughs> I was yeah. really surprised that they claim they can get um, like 
NVIDIA and AMD cards to work together 100%. Especially because, like, like you buy your motherboard, and, like, my motherboard is SLI compatible, not Crossfire compatible, right? right? They're like, one or the other, typically. Th- that's, yeah. Like, it's, like... So for them to say that, that that doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if your motherboard is Crossfire or SLI. It's like... Well, here's the thing. Um, it's a common misconception that just because something says there's a compatibility for it that you can't actually do it. You can do SLI no. on... Yeah, I, I know. Crossfire. It's just like... It's just... It's not as efficient, right? Because it's not built for that. As far as no, that. because the t- the technology right now has been all dry all driver based from AMD and Nvidia. Oh, okay. And and something like what Microsoft is is atta- saying that they're gonna do is is something that would work right at the core of the um the graphics uh, output itself, mm-hmm. instead of just like because right now what happens is, is it goes it goes card driver uh, OS and then graphics. This would just be like card graphics OS and it's right. just. There's there's no or cards or whatever. It just takes everything in that sub environment and just says your graphics do it. Which would change how it would work entirely. It's stuff like SLI and Crossfire wouldn't even be fucking important anymore because the whole thing would be handled through DirectX. Yeah, that's that's like a pretty insane technological leap, right? Like it's, if, it's if, huge. It, if it does if it does exactly what they say it does. Yeah, and like like Nate said, he saw he saw a a test of what it could possibly do. So I mean, it's all like now now right these now, now these right. people who are like, oh yeah, I got you know sponsored with my three GTX nine ninety Ti video cards that actually, <laughs> it actually does something now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and another thing, another thing that they're saying is that actually DirectX 12 is going to work across the board in terms of GPUs. It's not only going to be ca- four cards that are certified for DirectX 12. Right. Which oh, so like if you have so like, like stuff like a 600 series or something like that, yeah, those will work. Those That's... will be treated this. It'll take the entire graphics sub environment, and that is huge. That is absolutely really huge. Big. Like to to kind of put this in perspective for for gamers that might be a little more interested in that area instead of like the enterprise stuff that we're kind of talking about. Um, right now, it's it's not really applicable to do more than one card because developers don't always develop around that idea. Right. A lot of the times they're like, all right, most consumers, which is true, most consumers will only have one graphics card in their system. So they program their games around the idea of utilizing a single GPU. So for those of you that have two cards, you'll often run into a circumstance where there'll be the game will run somewhat. (laughs) Maybe you'll get a little more performance out of it. Maybe you'll get a little less performance out of it. But a lot of the times you will run into the issue of things like stuttering or extra tearing or uh, stuff like that happening. Things that are just like they're not even really within your control if you just change settings. That would change with DirectX 12 because it would treat the graphics cards in a completely different manner. And you would see the one to one performance. You would see the removal of stuttering. You would see. Uh, smooth performance scaling across the board on any game that is certified for uh, DirectX 12 or even DirectX 11 if it's going to work the same for older cards as well. <clears throat> so this entire thing, everything about this, if it's executed properly, is good for everyone. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. everyone. Yeah, I mean... As far <clears throat> as now... Okay, it'll be backwards compatible per card, of course. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's going to be like game oriented too. It might have to be a DirectX twelve game in order for it to work. Yeah, that's that's what it seems to be at this point. It's it's very good moving forward. Mm-hmm. It's definitely not a thing that will help you if you have problems running things that are DirectX eleven or lower. Yeah, because I yeah actually that that would make more sense because the. It's going to use parameters from DirectX 12. It's not going to just be like, you know, this DirectX 11 game is now DirectX 12, even though it was coded in a completely different right. uh, graphics rendering environment. Yeah. Does but I mean, I, I've already, I've already <laughs> seen some of those comments. I from fucking who were like, hardware. Oh, now I'm going to be able to use two GPUs with this old fucking game. It's like, no, that's not how it works. Well, yeah, yeah, I just thought like it was 
really coincidental that you know Spike put that article up there, being as I just upgraded my graphics card, and it was like, wow, I could just keep the old one and then stick that back in there later. It's like the one that was attempting to turn into. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wouldn't because matter. it was broken. But if I was just upgrading for Alchemist. the sake of wanting a better card, I could have just held on to the old one and then, you know, stuck the 680 back in there once DirectX 12 is. Out, and it would have been amazing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, I was definitely excited about this because as someone that works with hardware directly for a long time, I've been saying to people, one graphics card, just one. <laughs> it's pointless to go anything above one. Yeah. I mean, sure, you'll see performance, but it's inconsistent so no I, this yeah. this changes how i suggest hardware to everyone from this point on <laughs> if it works <laughs> that's I can't the big even part just, fucking just a really big chat. asterisk right now like, uh yeah if it works as intended i mean i would definitely end up going multiple video cards from now on it, there's no reason not to if it works man yeah of course Except for price, obviously. Yeah, but, you know. that's that's the major argument. But I mean, it'd be one of those things, it's like, you buy a new video card, and then just don't throw away your previous one, right? And you're still getting more power out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a pretty fair point so. to be made about that, yeah. You could upgrade so, for the price you were already expecting to pay, and then just which is really good for the performance. Long, yeah, which is really good for the longevity of your computer in general. <laughs> so... Um, the next one, and I believe the last thing we talk about, and then we go to Q and A, which doesn't make any sense. We have like an hour. Yeah, <laughs> we've ran kind of quick. Didn't time that right. <laughs> <laughs> and the funny thing is, uh, spoiler behind the scenes, uh, Nate was like earlier or like yesterday was like <laughs> we should we should do a straw poll and kind of limit how many things we talk about, and I was like. No. Well, I mean, I didn't really care about the matter, but obviously if we had limited the things we were talking about today, we'd have been done like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that yeah. was a nice 40-minute cast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, shit, we didn't, even, we didn't even cut as many as we usually cut out of this week's uh, topics anyways. <laughs> the, re the reality is that the news was just shit this month, or this week, okay? It was, actually, yeah, this month. <laughs> March. Fuck yeah, March. there was like a lot of stuff that I just like... Yeah, I sent no, Gray an article I, I earlier today article. from Game Informer that was like, well, this is what happens on a slow news day. <laughs> and it was like 10 things you don't say to an angry gamer, and it started off legit, and then the next nine things were just about the person being set on fire. It's like, this is an article <laughs> that gets published, I guess. <laughs> Game Informer, the new IGN. <laughs> <laughs> Hype! Um, okay, so the next thing, I will not notice you, Senpai. Is a thing I'm very excited about, and anybody who's ever considered game development as a thing should be excited about as well. Yes. Uh, Unreal 4 is free. <coughs> to everybody. Mm-hmm. Is it... I didn't read the article. Is it free... It's is free... Publishing? No, it's well, free across the board. You can make games, you can use it for educational purposes, you can use it for research... Uh, basically, the whole con uh, concept of it is we're not successful until you have been uh, you have succeeded. So they take five percent of royalties mm -hmm. after the first three thousand dollars earned from whatever software that you end up making. OK, so that's but other really than that, it's business model. Yeah. Other than that, it's free cross board free. You can just go on to there. You can go download it now and do whatever you want with it. That's it's safe for even, stuff which that even in that case, making three thousand dollars on something that you may or may not be just plugging your time into yourself is a pretty big fucking deal. And at that point, yeah. if if you've exceeded that that amount of uh, let's say revenue, there's the word I was looking for. Fucking what's five percent? <laughs> yeah, and it's five. It's five percent after three thousand. After three thousand, so three thousand yeah. dollars is definitely yours. And then after that, you they take five percent of everything. Yeah, that seems like it'd be really good for startups, but also really profitable for, uh, you know, the Unreal Engine, right? Like, yeah, because it gets a lot of publicity that way. <clears throat> well, that's what I mean. Like, hands on yeah. it. I think, I think this is genius. 
uh, as far as uh, Epic Games goes. Especially because, yeah, like, like big publishers are still going to be using their engine, right? Because it's such a good engine. So yeah, I mean, Unreal's pretty solid. It's it's really good. It it has having worked with Unreal Engine three, like the developer tools within that environment were fantastic because there was enough in place to where you could you could basically use the tool set that they made for you and put something together that looked good and ran good while at the same time it was expansive enough to where you could develop your own api within unreal engine 3 and do whatever the fuck you wanted to with it we didn't see a lot of that with unreal engine 3 there's a lot of cookie cutter unreal engine 3 games out there mm -hmm. but they fucking run <laughs> yeah oh absolutely i mean but yeah like because yeah because that's one thing I, I knew about unreal 3 is that it was super customizable as an engine yeah like there there were a couple people where i mean like i read articles and the engine is just unrecognizable like just just because like how much they've changed in the process of making the game it was like it started out as unreal 3 and then they just made it their own yeah yeah because they had an amazing foundation and then they just made it what they needed it to be right like Shameless plug, Killing Floor 2 is going to be on Unreal 3. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> I'm so hype. I'm so excited. Everybody's so excited here now. <laughs> Fucking spike through videos at my face today, and I was like, yes, all of the yes and everything yes it about looks, the yes. Looks so oh, good. my God. I'm going to play an ungodly let's, in a Let's just spend the next fucking 40 minutes talking about Killing Floor 2. <laughs> Games that are coming out that are going to be amazing. Killing Floor 2, and then The Witcher 3, and that's it. That's all I care about this year. Sorry, people. My hype is done. Everyone else is like, a Bloodborne! And I'm like, I don't care! I'm going to be really hyped for Bloodborne. Consoles. Yeah, I own consoles. So. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to touch it because of the console part. Right, like it's on. I think it's gonna be like a PlayStation Four exclusive. Yeah, yeah. It may, I mean, maybe it's on the if it's on the PlayStation Three, I'll touch it at some point in like the next decade. But they, they won't be able. To, they won't, they won't be, be able, able to run on the PlayStation Three. <laughs> <laughs> Wrecked old hardware. You think, it'll, you think it'll really be able to run on the PlayStation Four? They can't get fucking Final Fantasy Fifteen working correctly. Yeah. Okay, no. But Final Fantasy XV is also just reaching way too far, <laughs> I think. Final Fantasy XV had to downscale uh, from 1080p on the next gen. Mm -hmm. They couldn't even what? They couldn't even manage 1080p at 30 FPS. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the next gen systems are fucking trash. They're not as big a step up as, as people expect, and they definitely are underperforming as to the promises that were made about them. Uh, That's what you get for listening to E3 keynotes, right? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I It was the moment I heard the hardware inside of the next gen that I'm just like, I'm never touching this. It's not, <laughs> it's not worth my money. It's not worth my time. It's well, trash. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because, like, like they announced the system specs and I was like my computer is way better than that um netbooks were better than that they actually tweaked the hardware last minute mm -hmm. like they changed a lot of the things inside of it but like a $200 netbook had a more powerful processor <laughs> it was it was fucking bad it's um, it's a little better now but it's still not worth fucking three four hundred dollars it's garbage it's trash it's trash and it's gonna last maybe maybe another year before we start seeing devs just go straight to pc because the consoles can't fucking do it i mean that's that's <laughs> the transition that's happening right like more and more people are just supporting pc development because more and more consumers are just making pcs right right yeah, for the price disney's porting a lot of their library to a steam I can't wait for Kingdom Hearts. Disney! Disney and Square Enix right now have been putting a lot of shit on PC, which is Square Enix only a matter been. of time for Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, Square Enix <laughs> is the one that's really surprised me with, like, how much they've started to support the PC. Because I, I didn't expect that. Like, I didn't expect, I mean, the <laughs> Final Fantasy 7 and 8 re-releases to be on PC. 
Because before, like, they just didn't give a shit at all about PC. I was kind of more <coughs> surprised to see uh, the Final Fantasy 3 and 4 remakes actually put on Steam. Like, I didn't expect that to ever yeah. happen. I didn't expect it to I, move out of the th- out of the fucking DS environment. I expected it. Really? Yeah, because um, when Final Fantasy VII got put on <laughs> Steam after the... I mean, Final Fantasy VII has been on PC for a long time, people. It, it has. Yeah, been. but I mean... It just recently got put on Steam and everyone's like... Oh, <gasps> <laughs> yeah, if I went to my closet, I could go pick out the old three disc version of PC Final Fantasy Seven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I'm just... Final Fantasy Seven's been on PC for a while, and then after the success for that, they put eight on PC, and they were like, "Ah, oh, this is selling too." All of Final Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> so it didn't really surprise me. I don't know. It's just like traditionally, like they never talked about PC. They just didn't really care, right? Like it was always. Uh... Yeah, like it, was a, always, it, it was always an afterthought. You know what I mean? Yeah, I am. I am um, definitely slightly more surprised that Disney is making that move, and I definitely uh, want fucking Kingdom Hearts as as much as I want a boner right now. If as mu- as much as you want a boner, it's mm-hmm. really hard to get it. It's, up. it's not going to happen. But uh, <laughs> no, King, I don't know. I don't know because you have you have the publisher and the developer putting games on Steam. So yeah. I, I mean. What's to stop like Disney and Square from being like, and we have all the assets. We've recently just upscaled and redeveloped one, two, fucking Birth by Sleep and every other one in uh, 1.5 and 2.5. Three is coming out. I mean, why not? Announce three is a multi platform and we get a little further in development and just pump two, uh, 1.5 and 2.5 on PC, get the PC crowd hyped up, make a fuck ton of money. Disney could just hand it off to Lucas <laughs> Parts for the part. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm just I'm just sat here See? looking through 2015's release schedule, trying to figure out what I'm actually hype about. <laughs> the Killing Floor Two and Witch Three. That's all I care about. And Hatsune Miku Project Mirai DX on the 3DS. That right. sounds hilariously right. Japanese. Arkham Knight. I'm waiting for Arkham Knight. I after I, still I haven't played that franchise. I really liked. Uh, Arkham Asylum. I liked Arkham City. I I won't complain. Uh, about... Origin wasn't Rocksteady. Origin yeah, wasn't that, Rocksteady. that's what I'm saying. I'm not <laughs> complaining about Origin because it wasn't the same developer. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know. Like getting any bigger than Arkham City is just too big for me personally for Batman. Just because, like, <sighs> you know, Batman, you know, can't just whip around an entire fucking city in like a second like i think i think you know playing in a giant city would just show you the limitations of batman instead of feeling like super powerful well that's like that, okay that's There's... personally why arkham <laughs> asylum is better for me than arkham city it's just because it was like a more enclosed area so i uh, just felt more powerful okay there's, there's <laughs> a thing to be said about that though because last night I, as much as I could, I watched a uh, shameless shout out here, Mr. Game Guru 21 during his uh, <laughs> Thunderbust play uh, Arkham City, which is a game I still haven't touched. And he played it on hardest difficulty, I believe, and beat it within 12 hours while doing all of the side missions. Like, if he had cut out side missions, that game would have been short. Oh, absolutely. And no, I, Arkham, and I kind of remember say, putting more time Arkham than that. Asylum? City. Arkham City. City? Oh. I'm not, I'm not Which saying, is supposed like, to be way bigger than Asylum. Yeah, I'm not saying it should, shouldn't should be longer. I'm saying it's just the scale of the game, right? Like, I like when it was more... But that's why more... the Batmobile exists, though, to, to help compensate that, plus the flying. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> You're, like, the only the fucking yep. person that says that about the Batmobile. Everyone, is out, everyone else is like, Batmobile hype! And Gray's <laughs> over here like, ah, oh, fuck you, Batmobile. <laughs> Who wants a car? He's a, a car that, that can drive on fucking buildings. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> fucking I don't buildings. care about Batman at all, so that's my input. But I mean, Zarin said it best. Hashtag Spike eats everything you like, so <laughs> fuck Bioshock. <laughs> there's, a difference, there's a difference in that one between hating and not caring. You can I not guess. care about it just fine. Well, I mean, I've played uh, Arkham Asylum for like maybe three hours before I got bored of it. 
But that's because I'm not really a person that likes Marvel or DC ever. Like anything they've made, I've just been like, but the combat, the combat in that game Mm -hmm. is solid. And I well, can understand why, why a lot of people compared it to Shadow of Mordor because Shadow of Mordor's combat is all, well, other way around. They compared yeah. Shadow of Mordor <laughs> to Batman. You get they what I'm trying to say. Game so many people mimicked it, right? I mean, Sleeping very Dogs also few people mimicked, did it good. Sleeping yeah, Dogs also mimicked good. the Arkham combat. I wouldn't say that. I would say I wouldn't Assassin's say Creed w- 3 did for sure. No, it, it's not. Game. It's not. That, it's not a copy paste version. But I'm like, they they saw Arkham's they took the combat and how well it was made, and then they're like, okay, we that's the basis for our combat, and then we're going to make it our own. But even like, even Asylum wasn't an original idea as far as combat was concerned. That was that no. was copied from other things and just made outstanding. Oh, of course. But what I mean <laughs> oh, yeah, is like is like they perfected that style, right? Yeah. That like. Like they they really like nailed down how to do that right, and then everyone's like, okay, that's that's the example we use. That's how we're going to do it from now on. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I really like the Arkham games. They're moody. The great atmosphere. I like their environment. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, specifically what I saw from Arkham Asylum, I like it. Uh, like, the the movie, the, what was it called? Arkham, Arkham, it's something Knight. Uh, the Dark Knight, the mm-hmm. Dark Knight movie, the one where, where the Joker died. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant he, the person that acted, I didn't see the whole movie. Are you kidding me? I don't have enough fucking patience for that. It's Batman. Um, <laughs> oh, you mean like Heath Ledger. the actual, like the live action? Yeah, that guy. Chris I don't know actors. Uh, Heath Ledger. Yeah, uh, the Dark Knight. That's the one you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, like I liked that environment because it was something that I had never really got to see a lot of from Batman. Like I know there has been there's there's comics that were dark <laughs> involving Batman. Tons of dark Batman comics. Yeah, I fucking fuck reading. I am stupid young adult American I, male. I, <laughs> video games, movies, music, fuck off books. I hated. I'm um, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. All I'm it, trying it, to it. say is, all I'm trying to say is, I like the dark environment, and I really liked the environment of the Arkham series. I just, I could, I can't do the game. I, the combat system is nice, <laughs> but I just can't. I, I can't I, get. It's just not a thing you're into. It's fine. Yep. Uh, I hated. Batman until I read uh what's his face um oh my god penis 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 no. penis he also wrote the watchman but basically it's like old batman and he's like i think it's called i think the comics actually called the dark knight but it's like batman's like super old and he's just fucking miserable and it's just a really dark comic and it's like once I saw like Dark Batman and he was like, you know, actually like the Dark Knight and not this like super cheesy character. <laughs> Blue Beetle. Where is she? <laughs> Where is Rachel? I, I don't Go read don't Dark know. Knight, go read Hush, go read Killing <laughs> Joke, and then shut your fucking faces. That's pretty much it. Yes. So I don't know. Joke. I'm not gonna too. read. I'm not gonna the, read. The Dark Knight is great. The Dark I know the only thing you read is the top of the pizza box. Greasy <laughs> <laughs> ass pizza box. <laughs> that pe- oh that my pizza god, still looks so amazing. Good. So it's so oh. good. Pizza. Wow, there is <laughs> shit for shit that I actually care about coming out this year. Yep. <laughs> I don't fucking give a shit about any of it. Uh, Tales of Zestiria. New Tales game. The problem is it's gonna be on console I'm just not gonna fucking touch it it's gonna be PS3 though it's not gonna be PS4 you can get a PS3 Ooh. well I do wanna get a 360 a again and I wanna play Tales of Vesperia that game is so fucking good that was my first game in the franchise and I hear a lot of people <laughs> say that that was actually one of the weaker ones compared to things like uh, Symphonia and um what was the one that Cosby really fucking liked to have? A... No, that was Legendia. Um, the one with, the one with um, the person that voiced uh, Maximilian from uh, Dark Cloud Two. 
No oh, fucking ball sacks. <laughs> it's probably Is not anyone. His name. <laughs> it's probably not his name. <laughs> no, that's not his name. His name is tes <laughs> Testicules. But <laughs> Testicules. I mean, essentially, the last Tales game I actually did touch was Symphonia. I, I managed Symphonia? a few, like an hour or two playtime of Vesperia at somebody else's house. Um. Yeah, I'm just not a big Scott Tales Manville. guy. I don't. I don't really give a shit about the tales games i've i've played jrpgs i mean yeah. it's not for everyone yeah i, I mean the thing i is, didn't is i like, didn't care till symphonia <laughs> that was the first one i played that i liked uh, and actually finished like i really like the idea of the combat system but i just found them like really grating like for the most part they just felt i don't know like a chore like it, like playing those games feels like a chore to me <laughs> really that's what final fantasy feels like yeah I'm starting uh, to get that. It was, As I get it was older, I'm starting Symphonia. to get that more with regular RPGs. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was Symphonia. Still, still Lloyd for some was reason, Scott. Yeah, there we go. Still, for some reason, I play the shit out of Monster Hunter, though, even though that game is 100% grind. <laughs> Abyss. Yeah, but I think because, like, it, it's not a story or anything, and you just it's just like... You know there's, exactly. There's a like, loose story to Monster Hunter. Very loose, but for the most part, you, it's really you know you just theme. yeah. For the most part, you know exactly what you're getting into with Monster Hunter. So, I mean, I think that's probably why. At least like, it's not Dynasty like... Warrior. Can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> Dynasty Sorry, Warriors was really awesome when I was like 11 years old, and I was like, oh my god, you can kill like a whole army. And then I was like, and then like. Like, going back to it years later, I was like, this is, like, one of the shittiest games I've ever played. <laughs> like, this it's game is super simple. Super cheesy. Like, the only really good thing about it is the soundtrack. Everything else is just, like, run in giant field, <laughs> hit hordes of enemy, listen to cheesy Japanese dialogue, hit more enemy! <laughs> game. Yeah. <laughs> game made. Done. <laughs> Monster Hunter 4, I'm looking forward to that. Isn't that coming to the Wii U? I know it's on I know they have a Monster Hunter on the 3DS. Yeah, it's yeah, already... I would like it to come out for the Wii U. The same hey, way. Got a question. Bitcher 3, I'm gonna fucking kick you in the mouth if you don't <laughs> correct that slut. I'm sorry. Um <laughs> Should we open it up to questions? Because there's a couple people that would be all like, hey, I got a question. Yeah, I'm actually going back to the one. Uh, I don't think he's around anymore. We can address it. <clears throat> uh, that FSDEFTE asked, which was a thing I wanted to kind of bring up just momentarily anyways, which was the M rating for Arkham Knight. Yeah, I saw that. What do we I think want... about it? I'm pleased that the publisher didn't force them to keep things t for teen in the yeah. face of sales like the they're reason... they're risking a loss of sales numbers by not forcing them to dumb down things to hit that t for teen market i don't really think they are these days man like that's the reason i didn't really care because like like most of the major selling games are M-rated games. Like, nobody cares anymore. Like, it, it's not... It, like, the only place they're risking sales is fucking Australia. Like, <laughs> I mean, for the most part, it's just... Like, like all the almost all the big selling games, unless they were Nintendo last year, were like, M-rated games, right? Like, Grand Theft Auto sold all of the copies. <clears throat> <laughs> so unless you were, like... Super Smash Bros. or Minecraft, if you were a top-selling <laughs> game, you were probably M-rated, like Dragon Age was M-rated. Um, the Evil Within was, Alien Isolation. I miss those games that are, like, just on the border of rated M. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, during the PlayStation 2 era, we saw a fuck-ton of them. The yeah. Ratchet and Clank series, Jack and Daxter series, even some of Sly Cooper did that. They were like they they were you know, like they're, they're, this is for teenagers, and then every now and then there was that moment that you're like, no, that's <laughs> very much adult humor. <laughs> see, see, and Guru gets to the point that I'm trying to overall make is that a publisher will force a rating just in the face of sales. Epic Mickey was terrible by reviews and everybody else. 
but because that was like an E for everyone game, it sold like ridiculous. Because it was an E for everyone, so everybody was willing to buy it for the kids, and it was a Disney property. Okay, I guess I, for me, like, I guess just the difference between teen and M is a lot different than E and, like, teen. Because, like, E, people will just buy for their, like, little kids, right? Because whatever, yeah. it, it's Disney and anyone can play it. Mm. But, I mean, I mean, teen, like, they're not going to buy that for their little kids anyways. But, like, <laughs> par- parents, parents will buy, Hearts like... Kingdom otherwise. Yeah. True, but Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts Kingdom. also has fucking Mickey Mouse. Like for, for, for the time that like, I worked like in it electronics, has Disney characters. Like that's the thing is, parents will look at a game that has fucking Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck, and they'll be like, "Oh, kid friendly, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's fucking Disney." Yeah, the, there is a point to that. Bought Conquer Bad Fur Day with that specific m- mentality. Tons, tons, a lot, tons. <laughs> I'm gonna buy this game for my grandchild. For... Oh my god, why is that sunflower have giant tits? <laughs> For why all the time that I worked in them? electronics, any parent who came in to buy a game, I had to explain to each and every single one of them what the ESRB ratings meant. So there's, oh, yeah. there's definitely a point to be made there that 99.9% of the parents don't know what the fuck is going on with the ratings anyways and will just That's buy a game the because their kid asked for it. Yeah. So it kind of, yeah, it does probably not matter in the large face of how the industry works and just how much... That, that's the thing I've always been kind of pissed about anyways, is the fact that ESRB ratings aren't more strictly enforced. I am... Meaning, like, for <laughs> sales purposes, or do you mean, like, games that receive ratings? For sales because purposes. I don't want to be Australia. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, oh. I don't think you should ever be able to, like, legally ban the purchase or, like, the sale of a game or, you know... Deny it or rate it. No, definitely. Yeah. Especially if you're going to rate it for adults only. Exactly. Because like, there you if go. If you're an adult, you're old enough to make your own decisions. And that's basically the people being like, uh, no, you're not old enough to do your own thing. We tell you what you do. And that's not cool. Yeah. Fuck you, well, no, Nobody will even shelf an adult only game. If a game gets an well, AR that... rating, it doesn't fucking come out. <clears throat> yeah. Adults only games just in, until, you know, the massive popularity of digital distribution on steam like on pc you you can buy adults only games right like that got an adults only rating right (laughs) what honey san andreas oh san andreas no no. i'm sure it did at one point because they removed it from the shelves at, um, at gamestop uh, after a video came out that was, by the way, a, a modded segment on a PC copy um, mm-hmm. of the the sex scene, like the sex scene in which, by the way, San Andreas. If you, if you guys don't remember what San Andreas looks like, the, the fists were fucking squares. Okay, so like the, the, the sex scene was like watching two blocks grind against each other. Come on. <laughs> But I mean, it was removed. It was removed from shelves, and then it was replaced at with an, uh, an adults-only rating in in terms of physical copies, at least. I remember watching um, articles and stuff like that about that happening years ago. Yeah. No, no, it, it's kind of a death sentence for a developer these days still to get an AO rating, and they'll be forced by the publisher to to knock it down to an M. What oh, was yeah. that? Company? Is it hatred? Not the company, but the game. Is it hatred that I'm talking about? The one where you're basically just a serial, like, mass murderer? Hmm. Or a vigilante oh. murderer? It's like a twin-stick shooter where you, the whole concept of the game is kill as many people before you die. I remember vaguely hearing about it. Like, I, I skimmed an article at one point, but... Um... Yeah, I, I couldn't... I, I believe the game was called Hatred, but... Tits. Um, it's not even out yet, is it? No, but there, there. We could bring up that because it was mentioned a while ago um, by me. Uh, <clears throat> that game got a adults only rating. Hatred is it hatred? It is hatred. Yeah. Which um, they went to the ESRB about it. Like they were like, because you don't nowadays you don't actually have to get your games certified with anything from the ESRB. <laughs> There's no requirement to do it. If you want to sell it in a physical copy at a retail store, you have to have an ESRB rating. 
Um, See, manhunt was what I was wondering too. Is that what you're talking about? No, it's hatred. No, it's hatred. Manhunt it's hatred. is like, yeah, this is a brand new game that isn't even out yet. Oh, okay, okay. I was, yeah. I tuned out for a second. It's actually coming out. <laughs> like the middle of this year. But um, they went to the ESRB. They filed for a rating on their game and they got adults only. And like, this is the game. All right. You may, you may remember this name. This was the game that got put on green light, got super successful on green light. And then an employee at valve removed it. And then Gabe was like, ah, no. And it went back up. And then immediately after that, they went to the ESRB and got the the rating, which was adults only, which Steam doesn't sell adult only games. Yeah, <clears throat> I do remember that now. Yeah, that's what that's what we were talking about, is that um, hatred that one had an adult only rating, <laughs> which is weird because they sell honey pot. Your camera froze. Oh, no, it's better. Yeah, uh, I I pretty much couldn't see you guys for like the last five minutes because for some reason my internet was going weird. <laughs> I can see you now. The only thing oh, I hate okay. about that like is when your cam fucks up, it doesn't get rid oh, of it momentarily to show. I think it just died. Cam. No, you're fine. We got you. Yeah, I'm dying. Hello? I don't know. Hello? I don't know what's Hello? happening. Bye, Gray. Hello? Bye. <laughs> Gray, no. It's, it's so hard to hear you. Kitty cat. <laughs> Kitty cat. Okay, there we go. I can hear you now. Me, Kitty cat. Are we back? Your voice never distorted. Yeah, I know. Like, you guys didn't notice. <laughs> so go. I was just like, you know what? I'll leave it. <laughs> 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 I won't let them know what's happening. My beard never worked. Fucking <laughs> worthless beard. Um, Do we have any other questions from chat? Yeah, does anyone have any questions? It doesn't have to be gaming oriented, but if yeah. you want to shoot for that idea, feel free. Are you talking about Manhunt, Spike? No. That answered that question, even though I answered <laughs> that question to you. Are we sure? No. No. ESRB is a joke sometimes. The ratings sometimes don't mean squat. <laughs> uh, they're not supposed to mean anything. They're really yeah. just supposed to be a guideline for consumers. Right. Uh, Roger, Roger, Grand Theft Auto, the buying market for the game is still 50-50. I still feel bad for you, oh Pet. Oh, my God. Uh, hmm. Why do you feel bad for me? I don't know. What's... Ah. So can we touch your butt? Mm, we can touch each other's. Spike, will you keep personally hurt, hunt me down and kick me in the teeth? Yes. <laughs> don't worry about me. Uh, is it okay? I got a slow AZ E-Net. What's a good company for me? <laughs> I live in the middle of the Midwest. You're in Arizona, Nate, right? Yeah, I'm in Arizona. Don't, don't worry we're, about we're it. We're not the middle of the Midwest, though. I'll be, what are you talking about? I'll be here at some point. <laughs> I don't know. Are devs getting overzealous <clears throat> with the pre-alpha, alpha, beta thoughts? Uh, I would say yes. I could do this in yeah. Hey, Gray, you're frozen. Kitty cat. Kitty cat. Um, I would say yes. And the reason why I would say yes is because there are a lot of de developers that are really actually trying to make a game. And then there are a lot of fucking assholes that are just like, cash in on the hype. So it goes both ways for me.